What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Hockey Town University. You are here with me once again, Zach, one of your hosts, and with the other hosts, the lovely ones, Derek, Mustachio, and Leslie, Matt. What's up, boys? How you guys doing? Derek, glad to have you back in your bright, shiny face. Leslie, you have a weird infatuation with country music, man. <laughs> I love you had to pull that one out the door real quick because, yes, he does. Oh, my goodness. But, boys, good to be back, and you're welcome to show you my beautiful face with my mustache. Leslie, show us his twin. Derek Stewart Skinner. I like the look. It's a match. It's a look. We're talking about NHL. I got to look like the NHL. Come on, boys. Leslie, you got anything to say about your weird country infatuation? Well, it's just, it's really nice that I like to listen to the most patriotic, you know, God fearing, American loving music while you apparently were born without eardrums and you need to listen to the sound or I guess what it sounds like for your computer to have a fatal virus or for like what it sounds like if Jet, if Chat GPT could sing. I'm talking about EDM, of course, which is just the most brainless music you could ever listen to. Sorry to all our listeners out there who love all the wubs and the dubs, but that's my opinion. And I think it's the correct opinion. Derek, give me your best R2-D2 singing impersonation, please, for our listeners. God, you asked for this earlier, and I had no idea what the hell you actually meant. Beep boop, beep beep boop. That's pretty good. You're welcome, everybody. All right, you, that's all you get. <laughs> Better than what I expected, honestly. All right, well. Thanks for joining us once again, everyone, for those of you that are returning. But for those that are new, thanks for joining us. And if you could, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. For everyone, go ahead and smash that like button. It only makes Derek's mustache grow. Yes, and if you guys want that, make sure you Please. hit that button. Also, hit us up in the comment section. It is the last game of the season currently tonight. It is 7.44 p.m. as we are recording the Detroit Red Wings are playing the Tampa Bay Lightning currently. They are down 1-0 to going into the second period. Uh, boys, welcome. It's finally over. <clears throat> How you guys feeling? It's been a long year, huh? It's uh, It's been a pretty painful year, that's for saying. But, I mean, I can't lie. I thought it was a better year than what we've had in the past. Like, can you guys agree with me on that? I mean, yeah. it wasn't pretty, but it wasn't the last year, the year before that, year before that, year before that, or year before that. One thing that I will like, say <laughs> about it is I felt like that this was, it, it was definitely better than most recent years. But one thing to say about it is that I think there were more highs than there were lows this year than there were in previous years. And to me, that's a win. Um, also, the fact that we have more points than we did the last two or three seasons. So going into last season, you know, we have, if we win tonight, then we have eight more points than we did last year. That's a huge improvement, even if we don't get tonight's win. So that's a win as well. Leslie. Yeah, it's definitely been a long season. Um, I'm glad that we're finally here at the end. I think overall it's been an improvement over the last seven years, although it is still another year ended with no playoffs, but I don't know. I think the people who thought that we were going to make playoffs this year without adding significant upgrades for elite talent when we have Buffalo and Ottawa rising and, of course, the three top teams at the division still staying relevant and loaded and ready for the playoffs, that was kind of a pipe dream at best. But overall, I think just seeing the new coach come in and the team is running a whole new system plus all the additions in the offseason – I think it went about as well as it could have. You know, they're, they're still not there yet, but I think with some necessary additions in the off season, and maybe you can see some of those guys in, in the system break out and make the team, you could see a potentially better year next year. And I, I'd say I'm definitely excited for next year. I think we have a lot of positive momentum going in there. So I hope we can just keep riding this wave of positivity and come back stronger next season. I agree with you 100%. I think that this is just, I mean, I, I we pretty much say this year after year, and it's true, though, there's nothing else to do but go up. I mean, if the Red Wings do worse next year than they did this year, there's a bigger problem. But I don't think that we have a bigger problem. I think we have good problems. 
we have a lot of young talent coming into the group that are challenging for spots on the roster. Some of them are going to make it. Some of them are not. And that's okay, you know, because we do need talent in Grand Rapids Griffins. And we do want to see them grow and potentially make the playoffs there as well. I know Grand Rapids didn't have a great season as well as we did, the Red Wings, you know. So it's disappointing in that sense, yeah. But like you said, you know, next year's a new year. See what all this young talent can bring. And let's see if maybe we can make the same push like we did this year halfway through and see where we stand then, I, you know, and that's, it's going to be tough this summer to gauge what Steve Eisman truly is looking to do with all the draft picks, all the players that he has. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, some Red Wings news. And then after that, we'll go around and talk about the some league news and some outside of the league news. Then we'll talk about the game on Tuesday against the Carolina Hurricanes. And then we'll kind of uh, dabble into tonight's game. Like we mentioned, you know, we are playing the Tampa Bay Lightning tonight for the last game of the season. Kind of talk about overall standings update and then what's upcoming uh, for us as a podcast. This will be our first summer off season, So we're going to try and do our best to see what we can come up with, keep you guys entertained as well as ourselves. Uh, first and foremost, I guess, but for you guys as well, you know, we want to make sure that you guys get great content. You guys get great updates. You guys get great news, same old stuff as we've been trying to provide for you guys lately. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Like I said, with some Red Wings news, honestly, not too much news. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any news and they can jump into suggesting whatever they have after this, but Amadeus Lombardi was called to the Grand Rapids Griffins to make his pro debut. Um, I don't know if anyone can... Let me know if he recorded any points, what, how he did or anything like that. But good on him. You know, I know that when he was in the playoffs, I think he finished with seven games, seven points. If someone can correct me on that as well. I think that's fantastic for someone in the OHL. Look at that. I don't even need to look it up. I'm just great. I love it. So let's keep that energy rolling. There is the research. You're welcome. Yeah. Hey, look at that. All right. Let's keep the energy rolling. All right. So, yeah, I mean, that's. For an overager, you could say that all you want. You know, guys, 21, if not almost 21, um, coming into Grand Rapids Griffins, he, you know, in the OHL, put up over 100 points, seven games, seven points in the playoffs, like I said. And like Leslie and I talked about in the last episode, he was ranked second um, and in a couple categories and then first and another by the coaches poll of the OHL for players in the West. So there's a lot to be excited about with him, right? And I believe it was Mickey Redman who said that there's a good possibility that he could make a jump into the Red Wings roster for opening night. Is that something that you guys could see with this? For someone we drafted, what was it, sixth round uh, or was it fourth round, 160th? Fourth. Something like that. And a year after his actual, yeah, it's like a year after his actual draft year. So I, I do think of that with that. I know his age is a little bit higher. But just subtract one year from that age, just because he didn't get that chance during COVID to actually yeah. go through his draft year, get drafted, play. So now he's just a year behind a lot of people. But at the same time, he has the same stamina. He shows what he's doing right now. We got that crazy pick of him. And now he's just blowing up and we're bringing him up real quick. And I want to see something good come out of this kid. Like, ooh, I'm excited. Thoughts, Leslie? Yeah, I mean, I I think this dude is going to have to just completely blow off the doors in training camp and then take those doors and throw them in the wood chipper. Like, he's going to have to just play lights out in training camp to make this team. He's an undersized center. He stands at 5'10", 165 pounds. He's still 19. I mean, this is a huge season for him in the OHL. I mean, he got voted as the smartest player over literally Shane Wright, who was a fourth overall pick. So a guy who is a fourth overall pick that was considered a pretty big swing by the Red Wings, I mean, that's fantastic. That's the best outcome you can really expect. I really expect him to have at least one season in GR next year. Maybe if he's just lighting it up, you could see him as a late season call up in, I don't know, maybe March or April, depending on where the Red Wings are in the playoff picture. But I think he still has some time to cook in the, in the AHL and just kind of play... Like, we're sitting here, like, 
the AHL is definitely a notch above the OHL. There's no doubt that that's true. I think if he lights it up there for at least a year, that'd be great for his development. And maybe the year after that, you could see him make the team. I think he's going to have a much better chance to do that in the next season. So, I don't know. I think, um, I'm not going to say it's impossible for him to make the team, but it's not very likely. Leslie got us there, Derek. I because mean, uh, we... off what... Sorry. No, I was going to say, Leslie got us there. We got the age wrong. So he is 19. So Leslie corrected us on that. He's not 21. I always get him and Dose. Well, I, just, I had his elite prospects page pulled get... up, so yeah, I, always... I was kind of cheating. I always get him and Dose set mixed up. So that's my apologies on that, uh, Derek. We expect you to. Oh, I was going to go. No, go ahead. Say what you yeah. wanted to say, though, too. Uh, I was going to just touch base up what Leslie was saying, too, like how he might not be ready. Like, well, we li- I think we all listened to on the Wean Wheel podcast earlier. They were talking about him a little bit. He has that mindset for the game. He's really smart. Like you were saying, Leslie, you got the reward for it and everything. He just has to get to the size and the speed of an NHL player, and he'll be a dominant force in the NHL. But like you also said, he's puny. He's a tiny little dude right now. He has to bulk up quite a bit, get his speed down, get his handling down. Then that's when we will see something really good come out of him, even more so than what he's doing now. Kind of like with Mazer we have going on, who has to put on like another 15 pounds. That way he can even compete too in the NHL, even though, obviously. Whole different story there. Doing great already in the Grand Rapids Griffins, as we can see. But... Kid definitely needs to put on some weight, put on some strength. Then I think he'll be a force to reckon with. That's for sure. Yeah, um, I'll. I think he has a good shot at making the team. I mean, if you want to compare him just based on size alone, Braden Point's the first one that comes to mind. He's five ten, one hundred eighty three pounds right now as a twenty seven year old. Imagine how much he weighed when he was nineteen years old. Probably around the same weight, not that much bigger, and he can gain that same weight in a summer. That's all it takes. Just Go to the gym, shove a lot of food in your face. He could do it. And those, that poll that we mentioned, those were given by other coaches in that league. So it's not like it was other players or like his own coach voting for him because you weren't allowed to vote for your own players. All those coaches thought that he was one of those top players in the West. And he was ranked higher than Shane Wright in one of them. I think it was for playmaking. I could be wrong. I can't remember. I'll have to go back on the previous episode and talk about it. But what? I think, yeah, you're you're partially right about that because I, I think technically what the award was was, like, the smartest player. So that kind of ties into playmaking. And, you know, I, I totally get the comparisons of Braden Point. Like, Braden Point was a late pick. He was undersized. I think he also came out of the OHL. I kind of hesitate to compare him to Braden Point. I just did it by size, though. I'm not, points. I'm not comparing him to be Braden Point. I'm just comparing him as the size factor. That's it. Just saying, like, that's a player you can look no, at. No, I, I get that. that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get that, but it's just like, I mean, we certainly hope he could be the next Braden Point. Like, it's also worth pointing out that Braden Point was also an Iserman pick. So maybe Iserman has a knack of finding these guys who are maybe a little bit undersized, but there's a lot of potential in them. And I don't know, it would definitely be a great thing if he turned out to be Braden Point for the Red Wings. So I'll definitely hope for that. Yeah, so what I was really just trying to get I mean, at with we that... also look at the... Oh. Sorry, Derek. Go ahead. <laughs> It's okay. We have such a lag on these things. Oh my god! But I was also going to honestly, I was going to go against my own point I just made. We can always look at that five four player that Buffalo had those years ago. What was his uh, Gerber or something? Literally Gerber. Or, I think it was literally Gerber. Nathan Gerber. And oh my god! Did you ever watch him play? No. The dude literally five four just launches up at people and knocks the crap out of them. I'm like. Okay, in that factor, size really doesn't matter because that guy was crazy and it looked hilarious. Kind of like a child was out there fighting all these like foot guys, but he made it work. He was in the NHL and he played great. I mean, hell, if you can do everything that you need to do and make it up here, I'd be okay with his size at that point still. Yeah, and a lot has to go right for him, like you guys are saying. I agree with that as well. You know, he has to have a good training camp. He has to go in with the right mindset, and he has to play the way that he knows how to play. But also, along with that, what's Steve Eisenman going to do in the offseason via free agency? Is he going to make any trades? That definitely makes an impact of him being able to make that opening night roster. But from past experience, from what we've seen from him in training camps or 
uh, what is it when they get drafted and then they go to the prospects tournament or whatever it is that they have for their draft prospects. Didn't he score a Michigan goal in one of those? Yeah. So like, yeah, the kid got skill. So like we saw it firsthand. So for us to say like, oh, he got game. He put up over a hundred points in the OHL. If COVID never happened, he probably would have done that last year before he mm-hmm. got drafted. Oh yeah. So th- this could be our hidden gem that we've been looking for. And yes, I am not calling him Brayden Point. I want him to be his own player. I want him to be him. So he doesn't have to be anyone else. So Amadeus Lombardi, he has, like those coaches said, he has the playmaking, he has the smarts, and he has the hockey IQ that you want in a player, in my opinion. Uh, not that I can say that I've seen him play, but but what we've seen in the past and what has translated since then, I I think that this is someone that could come in into training camp going up against other young talent that we have, and he could make a statement saying, like, yeah, I want to make the roster. Even if it was the third line, there's nothing wrong with that. You could even put him on the fourth line. There's still nothing wrong with that. And then if you don't think that it's working out, send them back down. Injuries happen, too. So, just food for thought on that. Anyone else have anything on ammo? No more ammo? Nope. Nope. All right. Around the league news, Jonathan Taves and the Blackhawks will not re-sign. Is that a shocker to anyone? Not even the slightest. Not really. How many games has he played this year, even? No. 20? Good question. I don't know. Uh, I'll look that up, but Leslie looked like he had something to say about that. It's it's not really totally a surprise. I know that he had COVID, I want to say, earlier this season, in, which kind of limited. Well, yeah, we don't really know the details behind that, but yeah. I've heard allegedly that he has, like, what they call long, long COVID, COVID. Which I don't really even know what that means, but I guess it's like some sort of autoimmune disease where you just are perpetually sick and you just have the effects from COVID last a long time. We're not doctors on this podcast. If we were, there's no chance we'd be doing this podcast on YouTube. Wow. We'd be in our mansions driving our Bugattis to the office. So we don't know too much about that, but I'm not totally surprised. I honestly was kind of surprised he even came back this season to play. I thought he was going to retire in the off season, but yeah, he's most definitely going to retire. I really don't see any team. Well, I guess I could see some teams wanting to sign him just for veteran leadership, but if I'm him... I'm going to be thinking to myself, I've played, what has he played, like 14, 15 seasons uh, in the NHL? He's won three cups. What else does he have to prove? So he's been in the league since 2007. So Okay, so that's about 14, 15 seasons? That's 16. 15 seasons, I think? Yeah, 15, 16, around there. I, okay. I can't do math. But he played in there 52 games this season. He put up 30 points, 14 goals, 16 assists. Um, they did say that he is coming back. He has not announced retirement yet. The goal is is that he does not retire. Um, I guess my next question is, since it's not a shocker to anyone that he's not resigning, would you sign Taves? Me? I'll go first. Um, no, I'm not touching him with a 10-foot pole. Uh, I still think that that whole entire – I have an issue with that franchise. I have an issue with those players that were a part of the whole incident that occurred. That was a huge ordeal. I think that, uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm I'm strong on that. So, uh, guys, send them to the Rangers with Kane. Don't want them. Don't need them. <laughs> I'd love that. They can honestly. go up there, retire after one year. I don't give a shit. I don't want them. Yeah, I mean, there's no chance that I would sign him for any sort of term or any sort of money on this team. It's funny, like. If Ken Holland was still running this team, we probably would see that happen this summer because who loves giving out contracts to aging veterans past their prime more than Kenny Holland, our boy? So, yeah, there's there's no way. I don't think he'd skate again. I don't think he skates again in the NHL. I think he's done. I think he's going to hang it up. I know that's not his goal, but I don't know. Something something in my gut tells me that he's not going to be back. I mean, you're you're right. I mean, like at that point when you just think about it, like for him, it just makes sense for him to just do it because what else does he have to prove? He's already won three Stanley Cups. He's won a couple awards. Mm-hmm. Well, so you you really want to make money that bad? Go take on a leadership role for the Blackhawks. Then go go join their upper management. They probably don't want him there. <laughs> That's what. Which, no. well, 
now that you mention it, that actually seems like a pretty good avenue for him. And I, I don't really necessarily, I don't necessarily think they don't want him. I don't see why they wouldn't want him there. But for a captain, that's probably what's going to end up happening. Well, okay, yeah. Actually, I won't go deeper into it because I could talk about this all day. Because uh, I was going to say something that I probably might regret. Let's, let's probably not. I yeah. probably won't say that. So let's go mm-hmm. ahead and move on. Uh, Leslie's favorite team, the Islanders, beat the Montreal Canadiens, thus closing the playoff spots that were available. The Red Wings do own the Islanders pick from the heroic trade that they made to Vancouver. Uh, that pick currently starts at 17th. Derek. We know Leslie's answer to this, so we're not going to allow him to answer this. Are we okay with this? Yes. Yes, you are. We already know what you want, Leslie, okay? That's why we're not letting you answer. <laughs> I mean, I, we saw it was coming. They're playing the Canadians. It wasn't going to be anything long shot or anything. It's fine with what it is. I kind of wish they got placed a little lower, obviously, so we get a little bit better of a pick. But... It is what it is. They're going to the playoffs. I don't think they're going to make it past the first round. Of course, Leslie will disagree with me very much so. But that's just the hard truth of it for Leslie and his whole entire family, apparently, that lives all in Michigan, by the way. Leslie? That is not true whatsoever. Leslie, before you go on the spiel, I want to, I want to insert mine next. Hold on, buddy, because I will say because I, I, I'm okay with it more. Now knowing that the Washington Capitals are winning 4-1 to one currently against the New Jersey Devils, if they win and we lose, the Washington Capitals bump us down in the standings, which means that we will get a better draft pick. So I will be okay more now with the Islanders making it if the Washington Capitals do not fuck this up. That is my one F word for an episode. I don't get too many of them. I try not to use it, but there's my one for today. So there you guys go. I do swear, yes, I have a sailor's mouth, and I try not to use it. Um, We're very fr- family but, friendly here. Don't for worry. me, um, Leslie, I- I'm sorry. I- I'm not okay with it. You can call me a Pens fan all you want because I'm not. It's just because I want the Red Wings to have a better pick. We've been suffering for so long that I'm sorry that the Islanders – are barely better than the Penguins, Buffaloes, and all those guys. But, like, I definitely would have preferred it being the 16th than a possibly 18th, 19th, 20th pick. And now that I know that they're probably going to go up against Boston, coming down to Florida if they can figure it out against the Carolina Hurricanes, who are up on them 1-0, to zero, you guys might get lucky. So maybe you won't have to face Boston. But if you guys face Boston, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm I'm going Boston 4-0 on that series. <laughs> I want that 17th pick. <laughs> I need it. Okay, now Leslie can go. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. I Keep it as short as possible. Do not care who they play in the playoffs. They can play the 96 Bulls, the 85 Bears, 2016 Golden State Warriors, the 09 Patriots. I don't care who they go up against. This is my New York Islanders. The cup is coming to the island. We're going to plan a cup parade around my Nana's neighborhood. She's 93 years old. It'll be the best thing she's ever seen in her entire life out that window. They're going all the way. I don't care who they play in the first round, the second round, the third round. I could not care less. Sorokin is going to channel his inner Billy Smith. He's going to stop every puck that comes his way. He will sweep all of the opposition, and they will be winning the cup. And when they do... I'm on a first-class flight into LaGuardia wearing all my Islanders gear, chanting, let's go Isles. Let's go Isles. Is that really the, the chant? The cup is coming home. I actually don't know what the chant is. I was going to say, that is... I mean, honestly, Leslie, they go, if they do win the Stanley Cup, I will jump on that first-class flight with you just to go party, just because, holy hey, hell, you, what the hell. You know what? I... The, the invite to the bandwagon is still open. You guys just don't want to hop on with me. I never closed I close the door on you. No, Derek. I never me, closed the door on the bandwagon. Derek, shut up. You and I both know you that have until Vegas Monday to hop nice on. Fans, okay, we were we were original fans of Vegas before they were Shh. ever good. You know that. I know. <laughs> and they're <laughs> going to lose in the same cup final to the Islander. Oh, okay, okay. That's enough about the Isles. So. so. Leslie, you're a sick human being for wanting the Isles to get in the playoffs in the first place. So let's go ahead and move on. Speaking of the playoffs, 
They begin on Monday, April 17th, this upcoming Monday. So let's talk about the teams that didn't make it in. The Pens and the Caps did not make the postseason for the first time since 2005-2006 season when they were both rookies. Ooh. Uh, what did I say? OV won the Calder Trophy. Uh, some random dude won Rocket Richard that probably only played in three seasons total. <laughs> and uh, a whole bunch of other things happened. Like the HS tapes were still being used. And the, the CD pe- player probably got uh, invented or something. I don't know. Who knows? But, uh, I mean, I was about to say, if Leslie had that photo still, I'd say show that as a comparison to how long it's been since those two teams have not been in the NHL playoffs because, holy crap, those are some babies in that photo you sent us earlier. So I got a quick question. Oh, yeah, I can pull it up real quick. Yeah, I got a quick question for you boys in the meantime while Leslie pulls that up. So do you think that there's a chance that either one of these teams makes the postseason next year after what we are witnessing right now? Oh, my goodness, look at those flows. And those jerseys are old those looking at are ugly. <laughs> All right. So the Capitals not to reiterate the question, do you do you guys think that either one of these teams has an opportunity to make the postseason next next year? Derek, start. Oh man, I the Penguins are just so old right now. I don't know what's going on with that team, but I'm pretty sure the youngest player I think is their goalie at like 23 or 24 and then their average age is 27 and up i'm like unless they start bringing some fresh legs in start getting some new crew i'm like they're not the same team that we're back in 2000 and like 12 2013 anymore they have downgraded so far down they're all their best players crosby mulgan they're all old now and then we got the washington capitals over here with pretty much Ovi as just a shotgun up in the top slot he's old as crap too (laughs) I mean, he's hitting the all-time goal record right now. Well, not all-time. We still got Wayne Gretzky up there and somebody else, I believe. But he's not going to continue that process for, like, the next two, three years. He's going to start declining and declining. He's literally just getting old. And then we have also players on that Washington team that want to leave, apparently. You know, rumors. We don't really know. But at the same time, it's like, I don't think either of those guys, they might be going towards what the Red Wings were in. Back in like, what was it 2017? The nice rebuild stage when we started losing everybody, everyone retired. I feel like they're that's they were up here, up here, hit their peaks. Now it's just meow. That's the crazy until they got to do the so full rebuild and Crosby retires. That's the crazy thing about it, though, Derek, is that you look at their stats: Sidney Crosby in 81 games, 91 points; Malkin 83 points in 81 games, and you have Gensel, who is a little bit younger than them, 72 points in 77 games. So they're like, yes, they're kind of like the Red Wings back then, but they're still like good players. They just unfortunately didn't make it in this year. Um, But as time continues on, they're not getting younger. So is there opportunity window to keep making it in long gone? I think so, especially looking at the fact that they've spent, they literally did the same thing that Ken Allen did to the Red Wings. They've sent away so many prospects, so many picks, that they don't have anything in their pipeline to rejuvenate their roster. And I'm pretty sure that they're on a cap crunch too, somewhat, going into the offseason. And it's almost the same thing with the Capitals, but they were an injury bed team this year. Um, I think that if I had to pick one, they would probably make it into the postseason next year. Uh, a lot of things have to go right with them as well, and they do have an older team. But I know you didn't really get to touch on them, Derek, so I'll let you talk about them as well. But I think that they could make the postseason. I mean, they had the potential, especially, of course, they had a bunch of people out, like you said. Even Ovi was gone for a, a good portion of a couple of games there just because RIP to Papa Ovi. But, I Man, this the way I've been watching them lately, the way they play, it's gotten a lot slower, a lot less forceful besides mm-hmm. fucking Wilson out there. Sorry for my F-bomb there, but that would just, you know, it's his whole job to lay his body onto people, and that's all we want. He's one of the last enforcers in the league. But he alone can't keep the team going, can't break everybody down, because soon someone's going to come through and break him down, because, of course, he's getting older, too. Not that old, obviously, but getting up there now. All right, Leslie, your time to shine, buddy. Let's hear it. You got the pens or you got the caps making it both? None? Let's hear your take on them. 
I honestly think that the Pens can still make the playoffs next year. I mean, look, look at how they got eliminated. They almost could have made it if they just didn't lose to one of the worst teams in the entire league at home. I mean, that's true. That is one of the most inexplicable losses I've ever seen in a regular season. So that was shameful. That, shameful. that notwithstanding, they, I think they're not going to easily make it next year. You're probably going to see another situation like this next year, but I don't know. They need to just, as long as they have Sid and Malkin and they're still producing, like you said, they're both well over 80 points. They always have a chance with those two on the roster. Until those two, or really those three with Latang retiring too, like as, as soon as those three are gone, they're they're done. But they always have a chance with those three core guys on the roster. I really think that Washington is just going to have to blow it up after next year. I kind of understand wanting to keep the team competitive in the short term as long as Ovi is chasing this goal record because – you want him to have at least a semi-competitive team to have some sort of motivation to keep scoring because, honestly, I don't think Ovi really cares about breaking the record as much as you think he does. I think he just wants to do everything that he can to get his team in the postseason competing for Stanley Cup. I really don't think he care less about the goal record. But that being said, I, I really don't see the Caps making the playoff next year. Mm-hmm. I think they've been eliminated for like two weeks anyways this season. So they really didn't, they comfortably missed it this year. So I think there's no chance they're making it. I, I would definitely say in the near future that both these franchises are going to be in the dumps for like the next eight to 10 years. I mean, you look at the kind of tank that Anaheim, Columbus, uh, Chicago is having this year. That's going to pale in comparison to how they're going to be past all of their stars retiring. So I got the Pens next year. I don't really want them to make it because we are Pens haters. But I I could see an avenue where it's possible. Yeah, yeah. No, you make some really good points. Yeah, I think we all made some really good points. And I don't think that there's really a right or wrong answer. Honestly, if both of them don't make it, that's more room for us to make it. Honestly. So I'll just look at it that way. So go Red Wings. But uh, let us know in the comments what you guys think about Very that. True. If you guys have either one of those two teams making it next year or neither. So... Uh, I'd love to pull that up next year and see uh, if anyone got that prediction right. So uh, let's make it happen. Uh, what else do I got here? Derek brought this up to my attention. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about this one. The Toronto Maple Leafs put in emergency backup goalie from the University of Toronto, Jet Alexander. Uh, for some reason, Montreal fans were upset that they put him in when the Leafs were winning 7-1 to one, uh, with about a minute and 10 seconds left in the game. Uh Who's in the wrong here? Are Montreal fans in the wrong for being upset that they're uh, being disrespected for going up against an emergency backup goalie with a minute left? Or is Toronto in the wrong for doing that? Uh, Leslie, you go first. I think if you are losing 7-1 to one to a team and you are on that opposite team, and your role is defenseman, which the description of your job is to not only limit goals, but limit scoring chances for the other team, you cannot then talk trash after that embarrassing loss and say, oh, they're going to get what's coming to them in the playoffs. What is that even supposed to mean? You're not going to be the team across the ice from them for a seven-game series. You're not going to be the one responsible for handing them a loss. So at that point... You kind of just look like a poopy pants loser. I mean, that makes no sense. Like, what does Chris Weidman think he's going to do? He thinks that he's just going to ask for a release from Montreal, and Tampa's going to look at him and be like, I really like those comments. Let's sign you to a one-year deal so we can have you in the playoffs. <laughs> no. Dude, you lost in embarrassing fashion. Take your L. Go home. Maybe you can get home and scream into your pillow and say that quote, that same quote to the media to, like, your stuffed animals. Don't say that to the media and come across not only embarrassing yourself, but your team, too. That's just Bush League. Derek? Mm. Oh, man, this is the one that kept popping up out of nowhere on everything I was looking at. No idea what was happening. I'm like, it just popped up everywhere. I was like, okay, I got to do some research on this one now, and I end up pulling it up. Oh, my God. Calm the frick down, Montreal. You are getting destroyed. You are the equivalent of an AHL team in the NHL right now. You should not feel disrespected that they put a backup goalie in 
and the fact that this backup goalie, Jed Alexander, played a minute and a half while you were losing 7-1. to one. Like, it's not going to do anything. This poor kid, they literally put him in so he gets his moment in the spotlight in the NHL. He's not going to play probably ever again up here. That was his moment up here. They gave it to him. He had the chance for it. He's going to go down on the record books for the best goals against average, of course. Zero. Also go probably be in there with the worst uh, save percentage. Also, zero because he had zero shots. But at the same time, it's like, does it even matter? You're losing. Get over it. And, of course, they also got a little bit peed off with uh, them putting, when it was 6-1, to one, they put their number one power play out there. It's like... Who cares? Of course, you guys are like literally the warm up for them to go into the playoffs on Monday. They're going to put their best players out there. They do what they have to do. You're literally a practice squad to them at this point. Get over yourselves. And like, Weidman, come on. Why you got to make a comment about something? Like Leslie said, you're not even the team that's facing them in the playoffs. You're, they're just going, they're just trying to hurt Mont or not Montreal. They're just trying to hurt Toronto because obviously they haven't made it past the first round since. 2003, but I get it. It's a low burn, but not really needed. And there were so many people that just jumped on the bandwagon of crapping on Toronto. I was like, y'all got to calm down. It's not the biggest thing in the world. And the fact that they're getting upset about two things on two separate spectrums, like, oh, you're mad that we put our best players out. Then you get mad that they put their worst player out. Which way do you guys want to lean on that one? It's like, you can't throw two rocks and hit two birds. Oh, well, you can. That doesn't make any sense. But the same way, you just can't be mad for two things that are completely opposite. You just got to understand that they got destroyed. They were butthurt. And Jet got his moment in the spotlight. And that was it. At least from my perspective. So, oh, um, yeah, I, 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 I had... How do I want to start this off? Um, I didn't get notified about the story like Derek did. It wasn't really popping up on my social media as much. I just saw that it happened and that was it. I was like, okay, cool, whatever. So when Derek told me about it, I was like, okay, that's a little interesting. So it made me thought, and when I'm what I'm about to say, this is no disrespect to Chris Weidman. The dude <laughs> started his career with Ottawa. In 2015-16. He then ended up with the Edmonton Oilers in 2018-19, getting traded from Ottawa, I'm assuming. Then somehow stumbled into Florida, Panthers, and then just stuck in the AHL, went to the KHL, came back to join the Montreal Canadiens last season. The best season he ever had, putting up 27 points in 64 games. No disrespect when I say this. This dude literally has no room to talk. I don't know what he's upset about. There's no reason to be upset. You had your opportunity to make up for it the whole entire game. So why are you upset about the last minute when you're already down six goals? That's just freaking dumb. It's dumb. I don't understand that. Um, now, this is where I, I feel for him because if that happened against the Red Wings, I can understand why fans would be upset about it. But there's be happy for this kid. Yeah, like Derek said, like he's probably never going to get an opportunity like this again. He got paid for doing it. He got his spotlight. Let him have it. That's a feel-good story. So what if the Maple Leafs are historically bad in the playoffs and they always get knocked down in the first round? That's You have no room to say that. You've been to the playoffs once in your whole entire NHL career. 15 games. That's it. I, I don't know why you're talking, dude. Like... <laughs> There, you have no room to talk on it. Like, just let the kid have his moment. I thought that was super disrespectful, but I also see the other side as well. So, all right. That's it. That was quick. All right. <laughs> cool. So, let's go ahead and Way recap. That one. Let's go ahead and recap the Red Wings versus the Carolina Hurricanes on Tuesday. Uh, the Red Wings did lose 4-1 to one with, uh, I think it was Nadelkovich in that, if someone could... Uh, Tell me otherwise. I it was, yeah, it was Ned. Yep. Captain Dylan Larkin was out. Um, was it just a maintenance day? I don't think anyone really found that out. I'm assuming it's just a maintenance day. I mean, ice. Because why not? Dude, I seems swear. Like every it's time tonight. Watch, you, I mean, hopefully it's not the same way. But, man, I swear, every time, every game I watch against Carolina, 
any team that plays them. I'm so bored. Carolina is a boring team to watch. They're yeah. so defensively strong. They don't have anybody. I pulled up their line for their roster right now. They don't have really any top tier players on that team. I'm not realizing. They just have a solid middle pack team mm -hmm. that does all the little things correct. Yeah. And has great defense and exceptional goalies right now. Like Rantanen, I think he's like 19 and 3 and 3. I was like, I Something did not realize yeah. that he was. Yeah, I was like, okay, they're goalie and their D on point, and that makes sense of why they're where they're at in the playoffs right now and going into the playoffs because they're obviously a good team defensively. But man, crazy to see what they can actually do when they're actually not that high ranking up a team. This this is no disrespect and to then, you. you know, and Red your, Wings. This is no disrespect to you and your Islanders, Leslie. But I, if I were to compare the Carolina Hurricanes to any team, it would definitely be the Islanders because the Islanders do the exact same thing. But I would put, like I said, no disrespect. The Islanders are probably here, and then you have Carolina up here. I mean, it's it shows in the standings, too. Um, but you're right, Derek. They really don't have too many offensive weapons, and that's how I compare them to the Islanders as well. But they do have an Andrei Svechnikov. They do have a Sebastian Ajo. So they have some good names in there. They have Brent Burns. Well, they got Burns, but they don't got a Smechnikov for the rest of the year. <laughs> well, currently, yes, he's out for the rest of the year. But you know what I mean. They have that talent there. They, um, they did. But the yeah. Islanders There's do. There's some people in there. but Yeah, the Islanders do have Bo Horvat, sure. and they do have Matt Barzell. So they have that. So I, I would also like to point out that the Islanders also do have Sebastian Ajo. So don't they, forget about that. They do have a Sebastian Ajo. The other Ajo. Sebastian Ajo. They do. You're not wrong. The cooler Sebastian Ajo. <laughs> yeah. All right. So going back into the game, Robert Hag was the only goal scorer. Joe Valeno was able to collect an assist. So that's good to see. The young guys, like we mentioned, you know, we want to see them getting uh, involved in the play. So good on him for getting that. Um, not too much brightness in the in this game, to be honest. Um, if I were to take anything away from this game, uh, the Wings – did a good job of not getting completely blown out. <laughs> Anyone else? I mean, <laughs> one to three isn't that bad. I mean, it's I mean, not what else really. Can bad you really say general. at this stage in the, in the season like the Red Wings not only are dealing with injuries, but they've also been eliminated for a week from the playoffs. So at this point, what what do you have to play for other than a draft pick? Now, if you're in the locker room, you're not saying the same thing because like. Yeah. They're not playing for a draft pick in the locker room. They're playing to win the game, obviously. But I don't know. Like, they, they don't have a roster at the moment that is capable of winning NHL games on a regular basis. So, I I guess, good job hanging in there. What do we really say anymore at this stage? There's one game left, and it's almost over. So, I don't even really know what else to say. Robert Hag scored. Elite goal scorer Robert Hag. Let's go. Seven-year yeah. seven deal next year. I'm, I'm saying it right now. <laughs> but other than that, I don't, that. I, don't, I don't really know. I don't really know what else to say. Yeah, I mean, for those of you that are still watching with us right now, I mean, unfortunately, there really isn't too much more that, I, at least I don't have anything else really to go into about the game because, the, like we said, you know, it's the end of the season. Like, we're pretty much just like, what's, what's there really for them to play for? But for those players, you know, there's a lot that they have to play for. So it's a little different. But I think that there were some... Goods, uh, obviously a lot of bads. They didn't put up as much goals as we probably wanted them to. But, you know, like we continuously say, we want to see improvement from the young players. We're happy to see that some of these young players are getting more opportunity due to injury and because of trades that happened at the trade deadline. So um, hopefully this only improves them moving forward, and that's what we continuously just ask for and hope for uh, now that we're in our last game of the season. Um other than that, the Red Wings were out chat twenty one to twenty eight. They went over two on the power play. Um, Derek, help us out here. You got anything, buddy? I mean, if you go, th you could literally go type in Red Wings versus Carolina NHL highlights. <laughs> You'll literally get the entirety of the game in that eight minute clip there. Because th I can tell you, there were some good plays. But the sad thing is, they conjoined all those good plays and it only took eight minutes. I was just like, yeah, that really does sum up the entirety of the game. Like there are some good shots, good opportunities. Who said not who so who wasn't in that. Ned didn't really need to let that first one in. He got faked out a little bit, trying to go back and left that side open. But 
And then, of course, at the very end of the third period, we had a knob shot uh, to make it two to three, like four minutes left. But other than that, there's it was a heavy defensive game, except on the Red Wings part. Nothing too exciting. Again, like I said, I am bored to death watching Carolina play hockey. Yeah. Even though they have some good players and they make some special moves once in a while, it's still boring. I can't do it. It hurt me. It that took me two minute highlight video was probably five minutes too long. <laughs> it was. Let me tell you. It, yeah. It was like a couple of them are passes, and I was like, that's a good pass. Then they shit to the next screen. I was like, oh, that's a highlight. <laughs> Video, videos like that really kind of redetermine what a highlight actually is. I bet you that person got in trouble for making guess a video more. that long, too. They were probably like, like, why do you spend like four hours making an eight-minute condensed video of just plays that didn't end up turning into goals and like nothing happened? Well, that's my job. I don't know. You're fired. <laughs> I never even worked with that parts of the game. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, in general. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, like Derek said, I mean, if you, <laughs> yeah, I know it's kind of our job to kind of let you guys know the recap, but that's, to, let's be real. I mean, that's pretty much where we're at right now, and that's pretty much what it is for the rest of, you know, Red Wings fandom and other podcasts as well. You know, there's really not too much that you can really look forward to except for the draft lottery and your, your standings falling, you know, so like we're waiting for, you know, Washington's currently up 4-1 to one on New Jersey right now. So once they do that, I believe we get the eighth spot. Officially, if we lose to the Tampa Bay Lightning, so that's something well, to look forward. To. The Wings would still need to lose. I mean, it is yeah. only zero one, and what is it about eight minutes left in the second? So, oh, whoa, it, you, you're you re- know, you're you really, never know what the Red Wings. You're eight minutes, dude. I'm five minutes, bro. You're really behind. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking at I Have a Dream post right now from 2010. I, okay, Carter now I'm Ma- on a commercial. I don't that's know. Carter Mazur's. <laughs> yeah, that's the one that I talked about in one of the episodes. Yeah, there's like five minutes left in the second period, buddy. Not eight. <laughs> oh, so I, I have not looked at the time in a while. It's 1-0. So, other than that, you know, we'll go ahead and wrap it up with that recap of the Carolina game. Not much of a recap, but... Yeah, nonetheless, you know, uh, we wanted to talk about the Tampa Bay Lightning game tonight. It's the last game of the season, like we keep on reiterating. Uh, Larkin is in tonight and can be the first Red Wing to reach 80 points uh, in a single season since Henrik Zetterberg did it. I want to ask you guys, do you guys know, can you guys tell me what year it was that you think Henrik Zetterberg hit the 80-point mark? Leslie? You go first. Take a go. I feel like you might have already given this answer away in our text thread, but I could be thinking of someone else. Is it 2012? No. And I think we lost Derek. I'm not exactly sure. Nope. There he is, Derek. I think he's still here. There you are. Yeah, he's still here. He was a little frozen for yeah, me. Yeah, back. Yeah. So, Derek, all right. Thanks. Can you tell me when you think the last time Zetterberg uh, hit the 80-point mark? Oh, Zetterberg. Let's see. What was his career frame from... And uh, his last year, what was twenty fifteen? Yeah, twenty sixteen. Sure. Let's, let's just say that. Just spit out a year for me. I'm gonna go. Let's see, two thousand and never. Just kidding. Two thousand eight. Uh, it, well, what'd you say? You you both got it wrong, and it, and it's the year that was right in the middle. Two thousand ten, two thousand eleven is the last time that a Red Wings player reached the eighty point mark, and it was Henrik Zetterberg. <laughs> That, that that's eh, only a couple years. I've always going for the cup year. Is that not is that not crazy? Like, is that that's not sad. insane that 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 it's been that long since we've seen a Red Wing player hit eighty points? Uh, well, you use the word insane. Uh, the the word choice I would use is depressing, and dark, and sad. But insane is a good choice too. And so, guys, I like to call it a rebuild. A eleven year rebuild? Yes, exactly. Um, Thank you, Leslie. You know what I'm cool. talking about. We're not the Buffalo Sabres here, buddy. Come on. Don't do that to us now, okay? Are you sure? I'm hey, if Buffalo you gets in now? next year and we don't we are the Buffalo Sabres. We're the <laughs> new Buffalo Sabres if we don't get in next year and they do. No, we are the Buffalo Sabres <laughs> if we get the number one, number two draft pick in this year. We get Adam Fantilli, they got Jack Hughes. Or not Jack Hughes, sorry. Who who was it? Uh Jack Eichel. I'm sorry. That was yeah. good. And guess where he's at? 
Not there. I mean, I'll, I'll take that. I just hope that Fantilli doesn't do us like Eichel did the Buffalo. So I'll yeah. take that. Protect him and make sure he doesn't break his back. <laughs> it's that plain and simple. He won't leave the... <laughs> to wrap him a bubble wrap every time he goes on the ice. He won't leave him. Just go to Vegas and spend all his money. Put, put him in a non-contact jersey every time he's on the ice. No. <laughs> Yeah. Even in the games. Uh, other than that, uh, Huso's in net right now. Ned is currently on baby watch. Um, does anyone know if he's expecting to have a boy or a girl? I'm going to take a guess. No. Because we, we aren't sure what it is. I'm sure no one knows. But I'm going to take a guess. I think it's a girl. A boy. All right, Derek. <laughs> What's he going to have? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I feel like most hockey players usually have boys in general, so I'm going to go girl. Leslie's out to Fuck get us or something. Things. He keeps on like going girl. against us. I don't know what's up with them tonight. Is it because we don't want your aisles to do well? And, and because you have a weird infatuation? And that like was talking music? babies from Hockey Town University. <laughs> <laughs> and that was talking babies. <laughs> talking babies. I mean, you told me you couldn't have his first answer. All right. So let's go ahead and move on. Uh, Standings update, even though we've been talking about the standings, they're currently ninth. If the Capitals win and the Red Wings lose, we get eighth. Currently locked into that until the draft lottery. Then at that point, Leslie, do you know the percentage chances if we do land eighth in the standings? What's our chance for number one? Like five and a half percent? Yeah, I believe the percentage... I think the percentage goes up from five and a half to like six and a half or six or something like that. So basically terrible odds, but a little bit better than what we are right now, I guess. I mean, I'll take hey, it. You're saying there's a chance. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, uh, I've kind of just employed the strategy of just not really worrying about the odds and just letting whatever happens happen because I think if I just don't believe that we're going to win the lottery, maybe that's reverse psychology and we end up will we will end up winning it. Does that sound crazy to you guys? Or maybe I'm no. just doing this for my mental health? Buddy, if the Red Wings are going the way they do right now for the rest of the draft seasons like they did in the past, it makes perfect sense. When we're supposed to get number one, we don't get anywhere near it. When we're supposed to get like 10th or 11th or whatever the heck it's going to be, if they do end, or I guess if... Washington loses, but if they win, we get eighth. But, you know, we'll probably end up, if we get eighth, we'll probably get up, we could get tenth. You know, it's the Red Wings. I think the league just doesn't like yeah. us in general. Yeah. I mean, I, I you look at some of these other teams. I mean, what? Buffalo's gotten four first and second overall picks. New Jersey's gotten a couple streaks of luck. New Jer- or New York, I mean. I literally just said New Jersey. I was going to say them again. New York. Um, the Oilers. Prime example, too. I mean, like, granted, they weren't all in the draft lottery, but they got Connor McDavid from it. And then you look at Toronto, they got Austin Matthews. So it's just like, when is it finally going to be the Red Wings' turn? Like, when are we going to get the luck that we've seen happen to literally the same four teams over and over again? And granted, we probably didn't suck in the standings as bad as they did, for as long as they did. Uh, but still, like, that 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 one to four drop, that still resonates in us fans today. And it's just like, when is... When is Batman going to make it right for us? Come on, Batman, just hear my cry, please. Like, I just give us two. I'll take Adam Fantilli easily. That just helps us out so much. Like, do like... The oh, things bro, we could do with this. We just an need a goal scoring. That's what we need. Like, we're okay <laughs> in the defensive area now. We're okay with goalies, kind of, depending on how our ones in the AHL and ECHL come up. But we need somebody to pair with Larkin, just one or two top people to score on each line. It's going to make a world of difference for the Red Wings. Take some pressure off the defense, have people that can keep it in the zone and put it in the net. You'll see a whole do whole new different Red Wings come out of play. Yeah. And then if that's what we get for next year, that'll be perfect. Then our playoff chances go from like, you know, thirty percent up to maybe like sixty percent. I guess what I should really be saying is I'm mentally expecting to pick ninth or tenth, and I'm hoping to pick one, two, or three. Yeah. That's where I'm at mentally. And listen, if it does end up standing pat that we pick eight, nine, 
somewhere around that range. We get a guy like Oliver Moore, Dvorsky, whoever that's going to be. We'll get into those guys later. But whoever we pick there, we need to now shift our focus into not worrying about the draft lottery anymore, but going out, using the assets that we have now, and getting a bona fide established top-line elite talent. We need to do it. If we can't get it in this draft, you got to go do it somehow else. you got to make a trade because it's not going to happen in free agency this year. You're not going to pick one up and sign them for, I don't know, whatever the contract's going to look like. you got to go get them. Because if you roll into next season with this Red Wings, Red Wings roster as it's presently constructed – maybe a Simon Evanson, a Marco Casper, who knows, a Carter Mazur on the team next year, you can expect the same thing to happen this year. You're not getting playoffs, not in this division. You you got to, in, this, uh, in, the, in the division this tough, you have to match the talent of the teams around you, or you're not going to do anything, and you shouldn't expect to do anything. So I don't know. That was just a little rant that I wanted to go on. Maybe we get lucky. Maybe we get that elite young talent, which, might I remind you, will be cost-controlled because we'll sign them to an entry-level contract. So that's the best outcome. But if that doesn't happen, you have to make it happen somehow else. Or I don't really, I don't want to say write the team off next year, but it's still not great odds to make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, you're right. You know, be mentally prepared for 8th, ninth, 10th, whatever you get. You know, it, you hope that you get one or two, but bank on getting 8, 9, or 10. That's really what it comes down to. You're right, Leslie. And, yeah, I mean, fingers crossed, all hail, magic, conch. Did anyone buy one yet? No, I, I keep forgetting. Get my Amazon. Here. Oh, you got one? Oh, wait, is it the real one? Oh, no. Close. No. It is a conch, though. It is a con. It's, it's a dollar store brand magic con. All right. Well, but that's okay. I got mine in my Amazon cart. I'll buy it later. I All love right. it every night for good luck. So before we close things off, let's just kind of take a moment and uh, talk about what's upcoming. My first bullet. Nothing. The season's over. It's playoff season. Congratulations, guys. We finally made it to the end of the season. I know it was a little rough, but we had some great moments overall, uh, not just on the pod. Uh, but overall, the Red Wings season, I thought that they did fairly well. Definitely better, like we mentioned, you know, than all the previous seasons. Granted, we didn't get into the playoffs, but, you know, we saw a lot of improvements from key players. So that's all that we asked for. Uh, Sunday's episode, uh, the boys will be doing our own playoff brackets. We will be breaking those down, uh, our choices that we make on who advances into what. Uh, and then we'll, we will be recapping those on a weekly basis as we move along into that so keep an eye out for that episode when we do drop that wet or sunday night after our recording uh we have a lot of fun ideas coming up this summer so and we want to utilize those ideas to keep you guys entertained keep you guys around and keep growing with you guys and you know we also just want to hear from you guys you know if you guys have any ideas that you guys want us to do this summer talk about do something you know whatever it is let us know in the comments that really is appreciated we want to hear from you guys and we want to interact with you guys a lot more um so yeah other than that boys let's go ahead and close it off final thoughts uh, man it was a good season for us boys uh, i still love the red wings more than anything in this entire world but man it did hurt to see us come down to this point again but always got to look towards next year, see what we get in the lottery, see what we get in the draft, see what we get in free agency. I want to see the Red Wings come back and just destroy. And I look forward to doing all these little mock drafts to see how bad and terrible I am at predicting anything. Because usually <laughs> I am a betting man, unfortunately. <laughs> and I am very bad. Like, really bad, guys. It's kind of scary how bad I am. Luckily, I only bet like $1 or $2. <laughs> Leslie, final thoughts? Let's go Islanders, baby. No, oh, I and hate you so much. The invite to the bandwagon is still open, not only to my two lovely co-hosts, anyone who sounds off in the comments and hits us up on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you follow us, wherever you get our news from, you hit us up, we will let you on the bandwagon for free. 
and you can ride with us all the way. Or I guess me, because they're not on it. But you can ride with me. What a Red Wings podcast we have right now. <laughs> all right. Oh, uh, I promise you, the minute they get eliminated, which that won't happen until the Stanley Cup Finals when they win, but the minute if they do somehow get eliminated before then, I will act like the Islanders never existed. I want you to just know that. Yes, we know. We know exactly who you are, Leslie. Thank you, though. Okay, good. I just wanted to clarify. All right, so my final thoughts are, uh, Leslie, you're psycho for country music, and uh, yeah, I don't want the Islanders to win, so I will not be hopping on your bandwagon, but uh, great season overall for the Red Wings. That's uh, a shame Derek, for you. your mustache really does creep me out, but I want to continuously see it grow, so keep it up. Maybe shave everything else that's around it. That will maybe make me feel a little bit better, but those are my final thoughts, so... Uh, thank you guys once again for those of you returning. Thanks for joining us for another episode. For those of you that are new, you know, thank you for joining us and hit that subscribe button for everyone. Once again, make sure you're smashing that like button. It only makes the mustache grow. I'm currently trying to get mine as well. I, you know, kind of got this kind of down a little bit. Uh, Leslie, I think is working on his as well. Uh, we can get you some miracle grow if you want. Uh, leave a comment down below if you think that we should get a uh, basket full of miracle grow for Leslie so that he can catch up on his mustache game with us. And All right, well, I just I want to include this up right now. Um, I am not growing a mustache or a beard because uh, my girlfriend would not allow me to. She said it's just too scratchy, so that will not be happening. I will shave tomorrow. All right, so thanks, everyone. We appreciate y'all stopping by, and until next time, we'll see you Sunday night. Bye, everyone. Go Red Wings. Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats.